So, now you've been introduced to the business model canvas and seen how it can be a great way to visualize a business model. However, being able to visualize a business model doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good one. You can put all the components into a business model, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll work in real life. So what you need to do is have a way of working out whether the components of your business model actually make sense. The business model canvas has some advantages and it also has some limitations. It identifies the components of the business model. It makes you think about each element of the business model. It helps you to understand how all the components fit together. What it doesn't do is guide you on whether it's a good model or not. It doesn't help you to distinguish between high and low potential ventures. Maybe both, uh, a couple of different models are workable, but how do you know which one's better? How do you know which decisions are the best for your business model? You want each component to be as strong as possible, or more particularly, you want the whole to be as strong as possible when put together. And you can't assess that without having a look at the external environment. For example, competitors. Why do you need to evaluate? Well, the main reason to evaluate a business opportunity is because you want to give yourself the maximum chance of success. Here are some of the reasons that businesses fail. Steve Blank, who's I've mentioned before as a pioneer of the Lean Startup method, has seen research that illustrates that lack of product market fit is the biggest problem. In other words, what you're offering is not a good fit for what customers want. And there are a number of components to this which are all listed here. Common one is there isn't enough demand. The reason nobody's done this before is because not enough people want it to make a profitable business. Your product doesn't solve the problem well enough. In other words, it's not a good fit for what the customer needs. People don't need it that badly, that's the compelling need aspect, or it's not value for money, and that's the customer's perception, not yours. You may know how much effort and time and, and technology has gone into producing it, but if the customer doesn't value that, sadly, you're the one who doesn't have a business. They've still probably got a solution that meets their needs. Another problem can be the wrong team, skills and personal fit. Big one is underestimating the competition. Never tell somebody that you have no competition. It's never true. And it just makes them think that you haven't done your research properly. Lack of capital is the one that a lot of people think of first. Lack of cash. And at the right time, of course. But in actual fact, product market fit is usually a bigger problem and the main reason that businesses run out of cash. Screening your opportunity, evaluating it, allows you to identify weaknesses and identify the highest potential opportunities. One way to do it would be to look at the components of the business model canvas and do a quick SWOT analysis on them. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? But you're still going to have to look outside of the business to identify opportunities and threats. Opportunities are things that are helpful, threats are things that are harmful. So what is helpful or harmful? There are numerous versions of opportunity checklists around, but one of the originators was a professor called Jeffrey Timmons, and his checklist has been simplified for it within the Bygrave and Zacharakis textbook that is taught in this, bench, in this unit. So what it is, is a checklist of criteria for evaluating opportunities. And it sort of maps on to the components of the business um, model canvas. So for example, there are sections that deal with the market, and there are sections that deal with competitors. And there are sections that deal with prices, which equates to revenues, and cost structures, which equates to cost structure in the business model canvas. So for example, if you're looking at customers, High potential customers would be easily reachable, whereas low potential customers might be hard to find or they might already have a strong loyalty to your competitors. 
The opportunity screen that Timmins developed is a simple grid with the highest potential um, characteristics on the left hand side and the lowest potential ones on the right hand side. So here's a segment of it which relates to the market. So highest potential, the need is market driven, in other words the customers are coming to you. Lowest potential, customers don't even realize they've got a need yet. The customer is easy to reach. The degree of fit, in other words that your product or service meets their needs, is high. The timing is going with the tide. In other words, there are other environmental factors. For those of you who are used to doing Pestel or um, Dent PC analysis, the environmental factors are favorable. On the other hand, if your timing is wrong, you might be too soon or you might be a little bit too late. Pricing is generally better if you can be at high price level. The reason for that is it's easier to make profit and you can use that profit to improve your product or service and be ready to fight off your competitors when they realize that you're doing well and taking away some of their customers. The market structure. Fragmented competition means that there's lots of businesses but nobody dominates and it's usually easier to enter that sort of market than a mature industry where there are fewer competitors and the market isn't getting any bigger, so they're all fighting for the same customers. So you get the general idea. There are characteristics and there are definitions of what makes a high potential business and what makes a, lowest poten a lower potential one. So, supposing you've mapped it on the opportunity screen and you've identified where the weaknesses are, does that mean that because you've got weaknesses you give up? Not necessarily. What you can do is you can look at the factors that are weak and see if there's a way of turning them into strengths or at least neutralizing them. Perhaps you can find a group of customers that for which that is not a weakness, possibly even a strength. So, the idea is to try and move things across from the lowest potential right hand side to the higher potential left hand side. When you look at this example don't worry too much about market sizes and the figures put on them because bear in mind this is a US textbook and they're dealing with a much bigger market. So you aim for the highest potential. Can you turn a low potential factor into a high potential one? Let's go back to the example of thank you water. Their low potential is that they didn't have reachable customers. At least they couldn't reach them through the distribution channels, but they could reach them on social media. And by doing that, they were able to demonstrate to their buyers, the supermarkets, that it was a good idea for them to stock thank you water because lots of people wanted to buy it. Can you change your model to make a weakness irrelevant? Well, Sometimes, if you're having trouble getting to end consumers, a business-to-business -business model may be more successful. Not only may it be a better strategy, but it means that you're usually dealing with much fewer customers than you would be if you were going directly to consumers. Can you find a way to make the need more compelling? There are all sorts of things that you can do there, and we covered some of them before. So. If you were um, old enough to remember when mobile phones first came in, once you were given a mobile phone number, if you decided to change from Telstra to another supplier, for example, you had to change your phone number and that was inconvenient. But portable mobile phone numbers made that no longer a problem. It reduced the risk of switching to another supplier. And there are things that you can do to actually emphasize the gains, the benefits of buying now and exaggerate the problems associated with not buying. So, if we combine together the business model canvas and the opportunity screen, Steve Blank, pioneer with the business model canvas, has pointed out that a business plan doesn't survive its first contact with customers. In other words, you develop a beautiful business plan and then you 
roll out the business and the customers don't react the way you expected them to. And that's to be expected. So the idea is you don't roll it out until you've done some experimentation. You need to take an honest look at the opportunities and threats, ignoring them. Ignoring the threats won't make them go away. And discounting opportunities uh, means that you may miss out on the best opportunity for your business. What you look at next is the travel up for baby boomers idea. So there are two more episodes to watch. And we're looking at the higher and lower potential characteristics of this idea so far. If you look at that travel idea, the higher potential, they seem to have identified a need. They think their customers are reachable, but they're not really sure because they're planning to put up a website. How do they know if they'll come? They don't really know what value they add yet. And the product life, durable, time to recover investment, probably, because there isn't a lot of investment in the first place. So you start to see how the screen can be used. And you can see straight away that they need to work on whether their customers are reachable or not and whether their customers perceive them as adding value because they really don't know that yet. If you look at the market structure, well, they seem to have a weakness there. Travel is a mature industry. It's harder for new competitors to get into a mature industry because the existing companies um, don't want to lose any customers. The market size, fairly easy to measure. Market growth rate, it is growing. Cost structure, mm. as a new business, they're unlikely to be a low cost provider, so they'll have to look at ways of reducing their cost. The gross margins, they haven't really worked that out yet, so that's something that's got question marks on it. Let's have a look at that first problem, the first weakness, that they're going into a mature industry. Travel is a mature industry, but perhaps travel for baby boomers is a growing niche, in which case that might turn out to be a strength rather than a weakness. So as you look at your own business idea, think about what are its strong points and what are its weak points. And remember this, if you can turn a weakness into a strength, then you are likely to have discovered an area of competitive advantage, which will allow you to get ahead of others in the industry and of other people who might be thinking about entering it and that's well worth doing. With any new idea there will be an awful lot of unknowns as this last slide illustrates. So over to you. How can you apply the opportunity screen to your own business idea.